Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, our text from Deuteronomy chapter 8. We're going to focus in on the first half of the second verse, which reads, And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. Here ends our text. If New Year's and New Year's Eve is all about resolutions and anticipating, dreaming about the future... And Thanksgiving has to be the opposite, doesn't it? Thanksgiving is a day that we remember the past. And we remember the past as we pass the turkey, the stuffing, and those stories from person to person over and over again. Really, we haven't celebrated Thanksgiving, have we, until the platters are completely empty and the, bri- gl- 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 the gravy boats are cleaned out. We haven't celebrated Thanksgiving until the stories are told over and over again, sometimes with new details, and every so often, a new story uttered for the first time. And today, we remember the past, and as we sit around the table later today, and we relive those stories in the past year, we may look to one side of the table and see an empty chair where a grandma or a cousin once sat. And then we look to the other side of the table and where one chair sat, suddenly three are crammed together as a marriage has occurred or a birth has entered into the family and the family continues to grow. We relive the past years. We look around us and see a few more gray hairs, a few more lines and wrinkles on faces, and even as we tell those new stories once again. Thanksgiving is a day of remembering. And if you think about it, somebody who has no memory or someone who doesn't know where they come from really can't give thanks about anything. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they are doing or really who to give thanks if they have no remembrance. And so Moses, as he begins this portion of his speech... Remember, Deuteronomy is really a big speech that Moses gives to the Israelites on the banks of the Jordan as they anticipate crossing the Jordan and receiving that promised land after the 40 years in the wilderness. Moses, as he begins this portion of the speech, says this, And you shall remember all the ways the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. And then, as you remember, we read a moment ago, and If we were to continue reading, Moses, in a sense, gives a summary of their time in the wilderness once again. And you can imagine what the response of the Israelites are, at least at this moment, can't you? It's the same response we all have when Grandpa starts to tell his story for the hundredth time today. Okay, Moses, we've heard this before. We know exactly what you're going to say. We know the outcome. We know what happened. We were the ones who were standing there at that time. And yet, Moses' story, even for the hundredth time, was vital for the Israelites that day. And to be honest, it's important for us to hear that story as well. To remember how the Lord God has led you. Not necessarily through the wilderness like the Israelites, but the Lord has led you from Sin to forgiveness, from death to life, from isolation into a community with one another and in the fellowship of the body of Christ. How the Lord your God has led you and completely transformed your life as well. Now that said, Thanksgiving is more than just remembering facts. It's more than just a a mental exam that happens as you were preparing for a test. Now sure, this is a day of remembrance, as we remember in 1691 how Squanto and William Bradford on that Plymouth plantation celebrated that first Thanksgiving meal. But you really haven't celebrated Thanksgiving, have you, till you put on your own pilgrim hat and taken that fork full of turfy turkey uh, to stuff it in your mouth and then finished off all the pumpkin pie. Have you really celebrated Thanksgiving if you haven't had to loosen your belt buckle at least two notches? See, Thanksgiving is remembering and celebrating, but it's a remembrance that requires a whole body remembrance. It's not just an event or an activity, an exercise of the mind. Remembering requires 
all of us, our, our whole body. And, and you know that to be true. Husbands, what would happen if on your next anniversary, uh, you simply come home and say, uh, Honey, I remember today's our anniversary. Is she going to take that very well? You don't remember your anniversary and really celebrate it, do you, until you've brought home the flowers and taken her out for a nice dinner? See, it re requires physical activity as well. It, it requires a whole body remembrance. And you shall remember the whole way the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. But boy, remembering is hard, isn't it? It's difficult for us to remember. In fact, forgetfulness often steps in or at least encroaches into our lives as we fail to remember. For Israel, it was easy to forget, especially since they went through this for 40 years. It's hard enough for us sometimes to remember what happened last week and then to remember how God led them over a 40-year time frame. It's easy to take for granted what has happened or, or even who was the one who was leading them at this point. It's easy to fail to remember and to fail to give thanks you know, because forgetfulness takes over. And that's why we have today. That's why we have worship today. Because our Thanksgiving worship is an opportunity for us to gather together and remind ourselves to hear the story once again, even if we're saying the whole time, okay, we know the story. But it's that act of remembering. It's that joining together so that we can remember and remind one another. And so we gather today for that mental remembrance to hear the story. But then also in Thanksgiving worship, we gather for that physical remembrance as well. As we sing praises to God in our hymns, as we respond to his goodness in our prayers, as we give thanks and return the first fruits of his gifts to us in our tithes and offerings to come. Worship is not just a mental exercise, but our whole body is engaged as we give thanks to God. And remember how he has led us. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years. But remembering is hard, isn't it? Remembering sometimes requires us to face difficult memories. Ones that are painful for us. Israel, for 40 years, wandered in the wilderness as God humbled them and tested them, as he says then later in our text. We could even add to that that he was refining them and preparing them for something that was to come. But that wandering and that leading through the wilderness was not comfortable and it was difficult. They experienced the lack of water, the lack of food. They experienced snakes that would come and bite them and create death. They experienced the death of an entire generation. They experienced enemy nations and the threat of others around them. Remembering can be painful, and it hurts, especially as Israel was forced to remember the rebellion of their fathers. And yet when they remembered all of this, when they remembered how the Lord led them, they were reminded that even in those darkest moments of their lives, the Lord was present and continued to care for them. That even in the midst of all of that problem that they faced, God still provided manna and water and clothes that lasted and feet that never swelled, as Moses reminds the Israelites. See, the problem is when we fail to remember especially when we fail to remember those difficult moments. We fail to see a God who comes to us in the midst of those difficult times, who comes to us in the midst of the problems that we face and continues to guide us, lead us, protect us, and care for us, even in those moments. And you shall remember the whole way the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years. But it's hard to remember, isn't it? Especially when we prefer to focus on any other range of emotions or feelings for the moment. God has created us wonderfully and beautifully where we do have such a wide range of emotions and some of those can be so powerful, uh, captivating, and even enticing that we would rather have those rather than remembrance. Remembrance. 
It's easy to be angry. It's easy to hold grudges. It's easy to cling to that resentment as it continues to fester and consume who we are. And Israel had every right to be frustrated and angry with God for what he led them through in those 40 years. But as we said, God continues to shape us, to humble us, and to reform us. And he works in our lives, and as we remember where we have been and how he has not abandoned us but continues to provide for us even this day, we see that God shapes us even now. And so we gather today to give thanks, to remember. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years. And as we do that, remembering, it changes us. It refocuses us upon Jesus as it changes how we think and how we interact with others as it even shows us who we are. See, remembering reminds us of the love of the Father. As suddenly we remember that passion that he has for you and that commitment that he has for you to lead you throughout your life, whether it's the 40 years of a wilderness or even the events of the past year that you have undergone. When we remember, we remember God who sent his son Jesus to come to us. We remember Jesus who went through the... the, uh, uh, 40 days of temptation in the wilderness for you. We remember Jesus who lived out his ministry declaring the kingdom of God has come and is renewing all of creation and he does that for you. We remember that suffering servant who goes to the cross and experiences the pain and the sorrow of the abandonment of the Father and yet he does it for you. And then as we remember, we see the Savior who on Easter comes back to life to grant us new life with him, to assure us of that everlasting life with him, to assure us that we too have that guarantee that God's mercies are new every morning. And whenever we remember, we remember the God who has come to change our lives through that story. It helps us to see who we are in the light of God's grace, that we are now children of the light and and children of the Father. And sometimes it's difficult for us to remember. And sometimes it's even difficult for us to remember who we are with all that goes on in this life. But we stopped and we pause on this day to do just that to remember how the Lord our God has led us to care for us and provide for us throughout our days. And that's why we gather this day. It's it's only when we remember who God is and what he has done that ultimately we are able to respond in thanksgiving. The leper in our gospel text, he, he returns and he gives praise to God, giving thanks to Jesus for the healing that he has. And it's all because Jesus acted first. And came to him to bring that healing. And so we gather today to celebrate that God comes to us first as well. Not just in a mental exercise, while remembering mentally is good, but we respond physically as well. And that is why we gather. So how will you remember today? How will you respond? by consuming all of the side dishes and fixings that you can find until you can't fit another forkful in your mouth? Many of us will, regardless of what we promise ourselves right now. And if that's the case, we give thanks to God that he has blessed us with uh, the provisions to do just that. How will you respond? How will you remember today? By sharing stories and telling the same stories over and over again and maybe adding a few new details this year? And if so, we pause and give thanks to God for those memories that we have and for the friends and family that surround us that help us to create those memories and share the joy of this life. How will you respond? How will you remember today? By remembering the whole story of how the Lord your God has led you this year and how he has led you every year. That's not something that we have to do in addition to or as an add-on to the day's events. But it's something that we do as an aspect of everything that we do today. Recognizing that God is found found in, in every part of this day as we remember and then respond in thanksgiving. And so today really is a day of remembrance, isn't it? 
a day to remember his story of what he has done, how he has led us, and then how that story is now our story. And you shall remember the whole way the Lord your God has led you this year, 40 years in the wilderness. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds together with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.